Hey guys, this is Ix Roll at Ix with Rollout Reviews, bringing you another Bionicle review. This time we'll be taking a look at the Borok. From left to right, we have set number 8560, Parak, 8561, Nuvok, 8562, Galak, 8563, Tanak, 8564, Levak, and 8565, Korok. These sets were released in 2002, and each contain about 41 pieces. I consider the Bulrock to be the first real villainous force in Bionicle. At the time, we knew of Makuta as a threat, but at that point he had no tangible form. He was more of an idea with a voice. The Rahi were the foes in 2001, but it was made very clear that they were being controlled by Makuta's infected masks, and not inherently evil. Then, in 2002, came the Borok Swarms. Makuta was the culprit who prematurely woke one of the dormant Borok, but they were separate from him entirely. And if you wake one, you wake them all. As far as we knew, the swarms came from deep within the island of Matanui and were hell-bent on destruction. Their queens controlled the armies as a hive mind with one ultimate goal. To clean it all. To return the island to what it was in the before time. Given how little we knew, that sounded like pure evil. They were powerful, destructive, and massive in number. The Rahi were just Makuta's playthings, used to poke fun at the Matoran. The Borok were the real deal, untamable and unrelenting. Since all of the Borok are more or less clones of each other, we're going to go in-depth with Tanakh first, and then simply highlight the differences among the others later. All of the Borok have this ball form. This is how they are found dormant in the Borok hives, but they can also convert into this form for travel, to roll around and such. As far as playability goes, not only is this super convenient for storage, but it's also all kinds of fun. Transforming them is easy as unfolding the arms. and unfolding the legs. It's just that simple. The overall design of the Bullrock has always been really charming and extremely interesting to me. The stubby arms and legs, the rounded body, the sharp white teeth, the buggy eyes with angry eyebrows, and the dome-like head with a crona brain visible underneath. Very insectoid, very alien, and extremely original. They're not the tallest of enemies, they only come up to about the waist of your average Toa, but considering these guys fight in hordes, that's certainly not a disadvantage. The Tanakh are the quickest and most easily provoked of these six breeds. They wield fire shields used to burn down forests and melt glaciers across the island. On top of transforming into a ball, each of the Borok have two other main play functions, the first of which can be activated by pressing the lever on the back. This launches the head forward, which is super cool and a lot of fun. One direct hit to a Toa's mask will knock the thing right off. It's also possible to remove the rubber band and simply display the Bullrock like this, which adds a lot of variety to your shelf if you've got several of these up there together. Now, the second function is simply enough, opening up the dome and revealing the krana beneath. However, I think it's a lot more exciting to press on the eye and launch the krana at unsuspecting victims. 
Now unlike Toa, Matoran, and Turaga, the Borok themselves are entirely mechanical. The only organics found in them are the squishy, mask-like Krana. Unlike Kanoe, these are living organisms and act as the brain of the machine. The Borok queens telepathically control the Krana, and in turn the Krana control the Borok swarms. Each Borok comes with a single Krana made of rubber, and it will always be the same color for each particular set. The same color as their eyes. However, the type or style of Krana is completely random. You never knew what you were going to get. There are eight possibilities. There is the Krana Za, spelled with an X. This is found in Swarm Commanders and allowed its Borok to form complex strategic plans. The Krana Vu, found in Swarm Surveyors. This allowed its Borok to fly short distances. The Krana Yo, found in Swarm Moles. This allowed its Borok to tunnel through any substance. The Krana Su, found in Swarm Workers. This allowed its Borok enhanced strength. The Krana Za, yes, again, for some reason, this time spelled with a Z, found in Squad Leaders. This allowed its Borok to communicate telepathically. The Krana Ka, found in Clearance Workers. This allowed its Borok to shield itself. The Krana Ja, found in Scouts. This allowed its Borok to detect obstacles from a distance. And finally, the Krana Bow, found in Sentinels. This allowed its Borok to see in the dark. As you might expect by their shape, Krana can replace Kanoe. The idea is that the Borok knock the mask off of the Toa and then launch a Krana at their face. Wearing one of these inducts them into the hive mind of the swarm and puts them under control of the Borok Queens. Obviously in 2015, the Skull Spiders are an homage to this idea. Now we'll go over the other five available breeds. There is the solitary and dismissive Korok, wielding saw blade like ice shields and housing light blue Krana. The unintelligent and tenacious Nuvok, wielding drill like earth shields and housing neon green Krana. The extremely clever and dangerous Levok, wielding claw-like acid shields that spit a powerful dissolving toxin and housing red-colored Krana. The adaptive and unpredictable Galak, wielding flipper-like water shields and housing bright orange Krana. And finally, the calm and determined Parok, wielding seismic stone shields and housing green-colored Krana. The Borok are absolutely some of my all-time favorite Bionicle enemies. As sets, I feel the balance among the three entirely different play functions is unmatched to this day. There's just so many options, making them extremely fun to play with, which makes them excellent toys. From a design standpoint, everything is so fully realized and just works. However, I can't imagine by the sixth cookie cutter clone of a set, the concept might become stale to some people. All of the Borok are essentially the exact same thing, outside of a color swap and a minor tool change. I would highly recommend picking up one or two of these if you haven't played with them before, but Unless you absolutely fall in love with the design, it's probably not worth getting the entire collection. After all, who really needs six of practically the same toy, am I right? Wait, they made 12 of these things? In early 2003, LEGO released the Borok Call, an elite Borok strike team souped up in silver, sent out to re-engage the swarms by freeing the Borok queens the Toa had imprisoned in a protodermis cage at the end of the year before. At the time of this recording, I do not 
own the Borok call. They are practically shameless copies of the standard Borok from 2002, and it's no surprise they allegedly didn't sell well at the time. On top of that, the Bo Rock Hall saga is personally my least favorite story arc in the entirety of Generation 1, so I honestly have very little interest in adding any of them to my collection. Who knows, it's still possible I may decide to get them at some point in the future for the sake of completion, but until further notice, you won't be seeing a review of the call from me. I'll be skipping them and moving on to more interesting and less monotonous things. So that is about it guys, and this is IX Roll at IX, signing off.